Hello and welcome everyone to another session from Will to Play. I'm Bob Jones, your host today. We're going to be speaking directly about BIM management survival skills. And uh, if you haven't figured that out, that's really just a joke. Um, we're talking about BIM management survival skills. We're in session nine. Uh, the session took me too long. I'm trying to combine all of the workflow in one session does not really happen. So the thing is, is that we'd like to, uh, I basically was, had to break up the session from last Thursday. So sorry, but this was necessary because so much information is trying to be put into you in there's no way I could have gotten through it all. So, all right, we're in the design process workflow. We talked about schematic and preliminary design uh, last week. So we're gonna just scroll through all that. Data disconnect, key points for SD, don't waste your time, sustainable isn't going away, recycled masses, other tools, remake, flexibility with masses, yada, yada, yada. Basically, I'm getting down to the um, preliminary design points because that's, I mean, design development points because that's what we're gonna talk about for the next hour. Everybody okay with that? Questions, thoughts, comments? No, excellent. And I'm gonna go ahead and assume if you would like to be able to speak, go ahead and raise your hand. It'd be wonderful if you could. And uh, I can see your hand in the background there, Frank, looking at the mirror. Okay. Laura, you're not having any trouble hearing me, are you? I am not. Excellent. Well, I have you unmuted even though you didn't raise your hand. Um, so at design development, what do we want to look for? What do we want to focus on? Because this whole Revit workflow has really changed how our businesses run. So with, within this, you want to go through and look. At, once you've made that signature on page happen, they're going to pay for design development. You're going to continue your normal modeling practices as you have throughout your design process, but there are some things that you really want to check. You want to make sure that the model is set up for construction documentation, and you can begin to do that here. And the first thing is uh, major building types are finalized, and by finalized, I don't necessarily mean that the type name is finalized. I don't mean that the location is finalized. I care about one thing in these objects, and that one thing is finalized. So for walls, it's the lock line. For floors, it's the sketch line. For roof, it's the sketch line. That's what I mean by finalized, because you'll see some cool things that I'm doing in my project. Let me pause for a moment, and uh, I take a look at our project, and I'm going to go ahead and go to a 3D view. And this is just exciting, exciting, exciting news. Hey, look at that. That uh, looks like it may be a real building, doesn't it? Hmm. Ooh, Purdy. Will's 3D view. What does it have in it? Yeah, that's a real building. Wow. And there's a link that's been loaded in there. So, congratulations, everyone. We actually work on a real project now. And you see what really needs to happen versus all the little picks and clicks. Now I will jump over sometimes to a new project because it will be faster to show you things, but in this case, not necessary. So how many people are excited about this? Raise your hand. I'm excited that Will finally has a real project that we can show and work on because that is actually what I'm trying to do for quite a little bit. Okay, so throughout the next few series you'll find out more information about the project, but we're specifically talking about how to finalize type information. So let's take a look at what type information we have. We've got a kitchen, we got a storage. Let's look at what the name of this wall is. Okay, where are we looking for name? Oh, up there in the type selector. What? Why does it have W underscore basement underscore interior dash name? Hmm. By finalization of type information, there's one thing I'm looking for. It has nothing to do with the name, because the name is just a container. It has to do with the fact that this is an exterior wall 
that that lock line has been set to finish face exterior. I know that because of the look. And that the wall has been flipped the right direction. So you're going to see the fact that this is a live project, as you just saw. Live project. Oh, Williams. Got to replace. Make some requests if I need to. Um, this is what I'm looking for. I'm going through the model, taking a look. Okay, cool. That's all great. And I'm looking around. But visually, this is taking a lot of time for me because I have to click on each piece. So I'm going to show you a trick in my new project that I'm not going to do live in front of you because that would crush the project. And the trick is as follows. In a full floor plan, we want to find out some basic information about a wall type. So I'm going to go fine, I'm going to throw shading with edges on, and I'm going to go to my home. Actually, I'm just going to edit the element type properties. Again, I'm not trying to teach you picks and clicks. You should be able to know where they are now at this point. If you don't, that's fine. It's going to take you some time. I need to, need to show you how this all works in in um, in Revit because you'll figure it out. Your managers, you'll get there. Okay. So I'm building a wall type. Three. I'll go ahead and two. Four. So I've got a seven inch wall. That's wonderful. Perhaps I want to keep it six inches. Not really necessary. The idea is about to show up. And I've see, shown you this before many times. But uh, here's the real deal. For me, I don't even. How many people know what I'm about to do? Raise your hand. It's the rock star wall. It's going to show me what the exterior side, the interior side is, etc. Okay, so. Um, Rockstar wall, it's the exterior side. I'm going to change that color to yellow because the sun is on the outside. Just in case it's being cut, I'm going to change that to yellow. Just in case that's in plan, I'm going to change that to yellow. I'm going to set the transparency to about 70, 75, somewhere in there. I'm going to do that one more time. Rockstar wall, this is the interior wall. Okay, interiors, you know. I'm going to go with my corporate colors, greens, greens, and greens. And then I'm going to do one more duplicate, and uh, this is the core. Because there's really three things that matter with the wall. The first is the lock line. The second is, well, where is this, where does this reside? Uh, which, which is the interior, exterior side of the wall? And then last but not least, there's the, there's the, well, um, what about the core boundary? Where does the core actually sit? Those are the three things for a wall. If you didn't write that down, come on, people. Shading with edges. Oh, I missed one thing. The reason why I was applying all those materials is because now, let us see. Type properties. Edit the structure. Boom. This should be the exterior side. Oh, and that's the interior side. This should be the exterior side. Sun's on the outside. Makes it really easy. I have gotten inside of your office. The green is now there. <laughs> and otherwise, there's the core. Really easy visually to tell a bunch of things from anywhere in the project. So if I'm dealing with a project that's super big, like the one I was just looking at, I now have a visual cue where I don't have to click and find out which is the exterior side of the wall, which is the interior side. Everybody good with that? Raise your hand. You didn't get that. Yes, got it. You good? Okay, good. Thank you, Laura. I really appreciate your feedback, by the way. So nice. Okay. There's another piece that's going to happen. You have the walls that are of the exterior wallishness. What should the lock line of the exterior walls normally be? Outside, face yeah. of stud. Out, outside face of stud, finished face exterior, one of those. So the reason you would choose one or the other is based off of the construction of the building is one. 
Secondly is based off of the property line 